welcome biologists to part four of specification point C where we're going to be looking at the production of urine in the loop of Henle. So in this part we have the loop of Henle which is here this uh, obviously loop looking structure in the medulla part of the kidney um, and this also influences what goes on here in the loop of Henle will impact upon the collecting duct but we'll learn more about the collecting duct and the hormones that impact upon that in the next video. Anything here in a red box is taken directly from the Mart scheme, which we do need to be aware of. Now, the loop of Henley, which is numbers three, four, five, and six in this image here, um, is split up into what's known as my ascending limb and my descending limb. So my ascending limb is numbers five and six, where you can see the fluid is going upwards. And the descending limb is numbers three and four, where you can see here that the fluid is going downwards. So we're going to start off in the ascending limb. And in the ascending limb, what happens here is sodium and chloride ions are actively transported out of my loop of Henle into the surrounding tissue in the medulla. Now, as a result of sodium and chloride ions actively being transported out, it's going to decrease the water potential of the surrounding tissue. So the water potential of the medulla is going to decrease because it is, we've got this movement of ions into this area. Um, and this will therefore cause a decrease in the water potential as I go down the medulla. We'll learn a little bit more about that in a second as well. Now, at the bottom of the loop of Henley, as you can see down here, um, because I've already got at this point a lot of water that's been removed, again, we'll touch upon that in a second, um, I've got a high concentration here of sodium and chloride ions inside of my loop of Henley. So at this point here, at the bottom of my loop of Henley, sodium and chloride ions diffuse out of my loop of Henley, which again, causes the water potential of the surrounding tissue to decrease further, which is why as you go down the medulla, the water potential will decrease further and further. Um, so in the ascending limb, water potential of the tissues that surround the collecting duct is lower than the fluid inside. So as a result of my water potential decreasing as I go down my medulla, water will leave my collecting duct and be reabsorbed back into the blood where it will be taken and used elsewhere in the body. We will learn more about the collecting duct in the next video and the hormones that impact upon it. As for the descending limb, which is numbers three and four, the descending limb, he, um, this side is permeable to water. So what this means is that water can leave my descending limb. My ascending limb is impermeable to water. So I've got the movement of ions, active transport of ions out of my ascending limb, but no water can move out of my ascending limb. So therefore, as a result of these sodium and chloride ions leaving my ascending limb through active transport and lowering the water potential of the surrounding tissue, I'm going to get water moving or moving into the medulla by osmosis down its water potential gradient. And that water will enter into the blood vessels that surround my loop of Henle and be taken to wherever it's needed within the body. Now, because water is being removed from my descending limb, this means that any ions at this point as I get to the bottom, as mentioned before, are going to be in a high concentration. Because if I've got a lot of water that's left, obviously it's not going to be as diluted. So I'm going to have a high concentration of sodium ions there in, in the bottom of my loop of Henley, which is why, as mentioned before, my sodium, my sodium and chloride sorry, will just diffuse out of, of the um, base of my loop of Henley. So the collecting duct, as mentioned before, this is where water is removed from the urine. And this is impacted by, first of all, the water potential, which decreases uh, uh, de decreases um, down the medulla as, as you go down. Um, but it can also be impacted by hormones, which we'll look at in the next video. Now, quite a popular suggest question is, uh, for example, why do some animals, loop of Henleys, differ from ours? So, for example, this one is in a desert, is a little desert mouse. And... Um, its loop of Henley is quite long, it's longer than ours. And the reason for this is because we need to have um, a much more of a water potential gradient um, so that the mouse can reabsorb as much water as possible by creating a very, 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 very low water potential in the medulla tissue um, so it can reabsorb as much water as possible. So there we are. Guys, good luck with your exam and all the best. Good luck.